Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Midday with Trey, your weekly afternoon break. I'm your host, Trey. Let's get right into the show. Today's guest is the director of the philosophy department, is the director of the Jackson Family Center for Ethics and Values, and will be a part of an upcoming panel discussion talking about sports ethics and values. Let's give it up for Jelena Oxley. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. So can you tell like the audience just a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I've been at Coastal since 2006, so I've been here a really long time. And I've uh, worn a lot of hats at the university since I've been here. I used to direct the Women's and Gender Studies program. I've been chair of my department. And now I am directing the Jackson Center. Great. So I teach ethics um, courses. And I also teach social and political philosophy, feminist philosophy, um, contemporary moral issues, just anything related to ethics. Yeah. That's my jam. That's cool. And what, got you, what first got you into like that field and like the field of philosophy? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, not a lot of people study philosophy. Right. And, um, you know, in Europe, uh, it's mandatory as part of the curriculum in high school, but in the mm -hmm. States, it's not. So if people don't get a lot of exposure to philosophy, usually until they're in college. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people don't really know what it is, but I got interested in philosophy. Um, mainly my dad was a, uh, actually a theologian. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up in a family that was very interested in asking questions. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he had really interesting books on his shelf called like, does God exist and stuff like that. And so we were always having really good debates. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had just a lot of questions about, you know, the world and why we're here and why we have to do things this way and that way. And, you know, a lot of parents might have just said, because I said so. <laughs> but my parents would, they would talk and, you know, offer reasons for yeah. things and have discussions. And so when I got to college, it was just kind of a natural um, field for me to be attracted to. And I also majored in literature because I love reading. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I wanted to read, you know, all the great books. And so that led me to back to philosophy. That's great. So, and so the philosophy talk a lot about, you know, what your role is now, like uh, morals and ethics. So how yes. would you define those two things? Yeah. It can be kind of hard to, you know, to actually. It is. It, it really is. So there's three main branches of philosophy. One is metaphysics, which is a study of the nature of reality. Mm -hmm. The next one is epistemology, which is a study of knowledge. knowledge okay. And then ethics is a study of um, morality or how we live, how right. we ought to live. And so the way that we usually define ethics and morality is any system of uh, belief or a system of practices, mm -hmm. which uh, is a code of right and wrong. Mm -hmm. So we have like our personal ethics and personal convictions, but then we also have like a code of ethics that we follow as a university for right. students to follow, for faculty to follow, um, and then we have laws for citizens to follow. Right. So uh, laws are related to some extent to ethics, but usually ethics are more, um, you know, a little bit more uh, abstract mm -hmm. and they are often principles or values. And so what we do in philosophy is we talk about whether we have good reasons um, to support our ethical convictions. And if we don't, maybe we need to revise them. Okay. Yeah. And so in your in your uh, bio that I was reading on the you know the coastal page, you mm -hmm. you uh, you had a quote. Um, maybe it's not a quote, but you said in there that emotion. What did you say? You said emotions change beliefs. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. Just a little bit? So one of the things that I'm interested in is empathy, mm -hmm. and I wrote my dissertation on that. And I think there's a bunch of different or several three different ways that we can think about what empathy is. We usually think of empathy as imagining ourselves in somebody else's position. Mm -hmm. And so you often might, people use an example of like a homeless person. When you're just walking down the street, you see a homeless person, you imagine what it's like to be in their perspective and mm. it makes you sad. And so you might be more motivated to right. donate, you know, to someone who needs help. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm interested in is how we think about our emotions and then how we think about other people's emotions. Right. Um, and I think that if we understand so our, it depends on also how you define emotions right. because emotions can be complex, right? You can have, there's complex emotions like schadenfreude, which is like when you wish terrible things to happen to a friend, right? right? That's really complicated. <laughs> but then we have basic emotions like anger, right? Or you feel like you, somebody's treated you wrongly. So mm -hmm. you, you feel resentment and indignation. Um, 
And so it's really trying to figure out whether those, uh, to the extent to which those emotions lap on or match on to accurate beliefs. Right. And so one of the things that I'm really interested in exploring is how when you have an emotional experience, mm -hmm. like one that might connect you with somebody or one like where you see a great piece of art or you know you hear some music or something like that right. that it could change your attitude towards how you think about other people <laughs> so that's that's kind of what i'm interested in exploring yeah. here most philosophers have explored the opposite which is how <laughs> your beliefs change your emotions yeah, right. right you usually think that you know you have a certain belief and then you have your emotions that follow it but i think it also can go the other way around too Oh, very cool, very cool. Yeah. So can you tell us just a little bit about this upcoming panel discussion you have coming up? Sure, sure. So um, I always, I was a cheerleader. That's mm -hmm. a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> but um, there's not many cheerleading philosophers in the United States. I'll just say that much. Um, but so I've always been interested in sports, but my daughter plays con competitive soccer. She plays mm -hmm. travel soccer. And I have spent far more time in my life <laughs> doing soccer than I did doing cheerleading. Right. Um, and so uh, I'm really interested in all the, the, the value that we place on sports right. from you know a development perspective, mm -hmm. um, from a friendship perspective, also the financial perspective. Mm -hmm. And um, so every college is kind of reckoning with what to do with sports. We yeah. put a lot of money into sports. Sports attract students to the universities. People yes. want to come to a university where you got a big team. Um, and so, but then we have questions about like, well, what is what are sports adding to our lives? Do mm -hmm. they add more to our lives than say music or art or friendship mm -hmm. or something like that? Like what moral value do they add? Because we definitely put a lot of money into it. Right. It's definitely entertainment, mm -hmm. right? That's what most people get out of being a fan. They're not actually working out like the players, <laughs> right? Um, so there's that value, but then there's concerns about um, whether the value and the importance that we put on sports is maybe too much. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe the emphasis that we put on that might be uh, more than we put, should be putting on other aspects of our lives. Uh, for example, our personal relationships or our family relationships mm -hmm. or, you know, political obligations or something like that. So that's not, that's a little bit what we're going to yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. on Save the panel. <laughs> that's a little bit, but we're going to have several professors there from a really different backgrounds. We're mm -hmm. going to have someone from recreation and sport management, oh. someone from sociology and someone from philosophy. So we're going to have different perspectives there. The goal of the panel discussion is to really just see all the different ways we can think about things. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I, the thing I love most, I think about philosophy is that there's never just one answer. Right. There's never one right way of thinking about things. And so for a lot of people that makes them uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but for a lot of people it's liberating because it's like, Oh, I don't have to worry about having the wrong opinion. Like, there's a lot of right opinions. There are right. probably a lot of wrong opinions too, <laughs> but you know, it's just a matter of sorting, sort of exploring the options and sorting out your own ideas about things. So that's what we'll be doing at the panel. That's great. So you know, uh, coming off that, I want to challenge you with a question that I that I find interesting. So like right now, um, you know, there's a lot of talks about you know WNBA versus NBA. You know, why are these women yeah. paid so much less? Like like a lot less, like like ten percent of what the male players make. What is your opinion on that? Like, do you think it's just because like the audience is attracted more, there's more money in the NBA currently, or like, do you think it's something to do with gender roles? Like, what do you think? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I am more familiar with the soccer context again, only okay. because of my my daughter, and so I know that recently the women's uh, soccer league, the American Women's Soccer League, they just um, requested and finally got uh, the equal pay okay. to the men's soccer team. Yeah. And so um, it took several, a bunch of years in the making. And, you know, the great irony is that the women's, you know, national team has four World Cups and they're still right. getting paid less than the men who have zero World Cups. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so hopefully one of these days the women will get paid what they're yeah. worth with the World Cups. So I looked up the WNBA and I knew that they were paid less because this yeah. is common. Um, in most professions, men make you know pennies on the dollar it can be more pennies sometimes it's 75 cents 80 cents right and there are some fields in which it's really close like mm -hmm. 98 99 cents on the dollar but with the WNBA so you said 10 percent I looked it up it actually turns out the average salary for 
a woman in the WNBA is around, you know, $120,000. Oh. And for men, it's $7.5 <laughs> million a year. So that actually oh, turns man. out that the men's salary is 73 times higher than the women's. So it's, um, it's really astronomically yes. different. Yeah. Astra, and now we understand why people are going over to Russia to, <laughs> to play, <laughs> play exactly. on the off season, exactly. right? Um, so I think, so you can recognize on the face of it, this is unfair, right. right? This is unjust. This is a disproportionate amount of money that people clearly should be making. Yeah. Now the argument that people give for why the, the pay is so disparate is based on sales, mm -hmm. right? That's an economic you know, form of entertainment. People are gonna pay mm -hmm. more for, to go see, you know, I, I was Michael Jordan, but it's gotta be yeah. whoever the yeah, right, popular right. players are now, than they will to go see, you know, Brittany Grimes or mm -hmm. whoever, you know, they're gonna pay more. And so we're just doing this based on supply and demand. Right. So that's the argument. But that being said, if we're gonna try to have a culture in which women's sports are valued, I mean, this is a new endeavor. Right. So you need to invest in it, mm -hmm. right? Any time that you're creating something new, to some extent we create demand by creating the supply, right. right? By showing people, look here, look at these amazing athletes, look mm -hmm. what they're able to do. Um, you can find this just as entertaining yeah. as you find the other, you know, men playing basketball. So um, my hope would be to say that, you know, you don't, you shouldn't necessarily have to redistribute the player salary from one to another. That right. would be bizarre, right? To take away somebody's salary. Mm -hmm. But it does seem like the NBA is flush with cash. So they could use certainly some of those, that money yeah. to invest in the women's programs and definitely by investing in the employees, right? right? Um, because there's a lot of valuable people in the world. People are valued for their uh, contributions to society. And we may say that the men are getting paid too much, right? Mm -hmm. It may turn out they're making more than they should. Mm -hmm. But if we certainly invest more in the women's program, we can create more demand. And then those those ticket sales will just go right up. Mm -hmm. If you look at the history of women's sports, this is a very new thing that we're doing by having professional women's sports. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very new thing to have them televised and for them to become a, an attraction. And so we just got to keep pressing forward. Right. Well, thank you for your opinion on that. Yeah, So sure. just wrapping up, um, if you have any advice to, you know, maybe potential or uh, uh, maybe potential or current uh, philosophy students, um, you know, maybe they're looking for a path to go out there because I imagine it can be maybe a sort of confusing road yeah. um, after, after graduation, you know, after you get out of school, like what next? So what, what could you say to them or maybe what tidbit of advice could you give to them just yeah. to help them on the journey? Well, that's a great question. Um, so I, I think our philosophy major is great. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in thinking about all these questions, the philosophy major is a, a great way to go because you learn so much and you get a lot of really valuable argumentation, argumentation skills. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the best things you can get. Um, a lot of our students end up going to law school. They end up going to other professional degree programs. And my advice that I give to students when they go out is to take what they've learned in mm -hmm. philosophy and apply it and just keep thinking about those things. I recently ran across, uh, or I uh, ran, ran into a, a former student and she said that a lot of the ethics stuff mm -hmm. that she had learned in college when she became a parent right. and she started thinking about how to teach her child and she was interacting with her husband. She said, I think about the stuff I learned in those ethics classes every day. She said, I think about it every day and I don't know what I'd do if I hadn't studied it. What, yeah. how, what would be the basis of my decisions? So. Um, I always tell my students that studying philosophy is like a long-term investment. Mm -hmm. You know, I get I get emails from students five, 10, 15 years later, and they'll be saying, you know, I had a midlife crisis, <laughs> and you know, I really want, you know, appreciated, you know, I remembered what we learned in philosophy class. Mm -hmm. So it's really, you know, learning just how to be a better human right. and how to how to get over a lot of the hard things that come your way after yeah. college, um, and just to hold on to it and don't forget it. Ooh, that's great. So. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, of course. This was a lot of fun. Thank yeah, you so much Thank for you. inviting me. All right, everybody. It is that time again. Time for the hat of the week. The hat for this week is this CAB hat here. And if you don't know what CAB is, CAB stands for Coastal Activities Board. And it is the uh, student organization slash uh, student affairs division uh, right here on Coastal's campus that does a lot of the events on campus. So, 
annual talent shows, that's cab. Um, cab cookout, that's cab. You know, a lot of the things that goes on, a lot of bigger events are, are cab. And I was a part of that for my undergrad. Um, I was very involved. I was a member and then I was the um, di assistant director of membership uh, my last year. So uh, cab holds a deep place in my heart. Shout out cab. Now it's time for your weekly update. First, on Thursday, October 6th, starting at 6 p.m. in Britain 240, the Department of Language and Intercultural Studies continues its study abroad series, The World Through My Eyes. This time, they will talk about a semester in Taiwan. On Wednesday, October 12th, starting at 4.30 p.m. in Edwards 256, the Jackson Family Center for Ethics and Values presents a panel discussion surrounding the ethics and moral values of sports featuring the guest of today's show, Jelena Oxley and other representatives from across campus. You're not gonna wanna miss that one. Also on Wednesday, October 12th, starting at 5 p.m. in the Lib Jackson Theater, the Department of Language and Intercultural Studies continues its Latin American Film Festival with the film Miriam Lies from the Dominican Republic. A lot of good events are coming up this week, so make sure you follow all Edwards social media pages so you can stay up to date with all things Edwards. All right, that wraps up this week's episode of Midday with Trey. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again. Same time, same place. Bye.